We're making kamag. Kamag are Kashmiri lamb ribs that are slow cooked in milk and spice and then fried in besan flour and yogurt. Dad always called them fatty lamb chops. So these are all gonna go in. And then on top of the lamb ribs is just going to go just some milk. It's around two cups. And then that's just gonna go on the stove. So just if you have a little look at this milk, I do wish you had smell vision but it's all boiling away and it smells sweet and creamy and rich. And so this is the point where the spice is going to go in. We're going to start with salt. And I'll some bay leaf. Bay leaf provides an astringent quality. So a teaspoon of aniseed, ground fennel. So ground fennel is warmth and sweetness and that's going to find its equal in, in the lamb fat itself. Cumin seed, which is pure familiarity. It's to this is the spice of family right here. So three teaspoons. So you can see it's quite a lot of spice, ground ginger, but then there's quite a lot of um, fat. <laughs> and so getting through that fat requires some effort. Okay, so a couple of cloves. I'm gonna say like a half a dozen. And then black cardamom, say so about six. Asafoetida. So a pinch of the powder, but a few drops of the liquid. And then chili, but I need to dissolve that in a little bit of water. And that's a hot chili. So dissolving it in water like this just means that it goes through the dish more evenly. So we are looking for browning. The fundament of Kamag is to really use the milk and use this process of the lamb rib and the milk together to create this incredible strong fat base that's going to support really dense, delicious architectural flavour. The yoghurt and the oil is beginning to split and I know that in um, a lot of Western cultures, like when you talk about something splitting, it's a bad sign and it's an emergency. but in Kashmiri food, it's part of the process of browning. So you know that you're about two thirds of the way there once the yogurt and the oil separates. Because at that point, what's happening is the yogurt will begin to dry out and to uh, form a crust over the meat. And that's what we call caramelization. And that's where all the richness is. And then from that point, it's just a matter of cooking down the oil and doing that on a slightly softer heat. You can try it now, just to see where it's at. Woof! Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is intense. So the chili in there is really strong. And um, back behind that is, um, is like a real sweet, savory quality, which is exactly which is exactly what Kashmiri food should be. So things like aniseed and cumin seed. That earthy spice provides an anchor for the warmth and sweetness of fennel and ginger and garam masala and the drive of the salt and kind of keeps the flavour tight and low. I want to try it again. Oh, and that's just smoothed out. So the heat's still there, but it's definitely not as dramatic as it was, not as thin as it was, it's thickened up. Um, and that's the benefit of this kind of a technique where the technique is to create structure in the dish through use of fats and through use of time. So those two things alone create a structural quality that supports the spice and stops the chili feeling thin, as well as preventing the heavier spice from feeling bogged down and laden. It's milk, it's lamb, it's a little bit of heat and a little bit of spice. And together, this is what you come up with at the end of that. There's alchemy in food. While this is doing its thing, I'm just gonna get the besan flour and the yogurt and organize that. So besan flour is just chickpea flour. So just enough to coat the rib. So the yogurt needs to be whipped by whipping the yogurt. 
We've still got all that beautiful creamy density, but when we whip it, some of the acidity comes through with a little more clarity. Um, this process is just going to add a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of like a corset to the whole flavor profile. Okay, so a little bit of salt in this and a little bit of chili as well. So just a half a teaspoon of Kashmiri chili. Mm, and it's salty and warm. The Kashmiri chili is a little bit floral. Let me see how this is looking. That's looking pretty epic. Dip in yogurt. Dip in besom flour and then pop them on this platter and then they're gonna get fried. It is rich, but I am gonna drain on paper towel. <laughs> At least in Kashmiri food, we don't have technique in the way of there's no complicated equipment. There's no mandolin, there's no mirepoix. Really, the technique is, is, is understanding the basic elements. So understanding that milk boiled with meat is going to create um, a really broad fat base. And that broad fat base is a really strong foundational structure that allows me to come in on top and build this really intricate kind of spice architecture. It's milk, it's lamb, it's a little bit of heat and a little bit of spice. I lost. Just to finish. Some gold leaf. Dad would be proud of me. It's really soft, it's very unctuous, it's velvety. The spice is very much a supporting star to all of the, um, the richness of the fats accompanying the lamb, but what comes through strongest is actually the flavor of the lamb itself. This is definitive mountain food. It's really true Kashmiri flavor. Milk cooked, deep fried, besom flowered, spiced. Kashmiri lamb rib.